What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another V-Ray for SketchUp tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about some of the differences between bump mapping and displacement mapping for creating rough surfaces in V-Ray. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm just going to apply a simple material to a face within SketchUp. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my name colors and I'm going to pick one of these kind of white colors. So in this case we'll go ahead and go with this snow color. And so the reason I'm going to do this is I want to demonstrate the way that bump maps work within V-Ray. So what a bump map is, is basically a bump map is uh, when V-Ray uses a texture image to determine where it should simulate bumpiness within your model. So it's basically a shading effect that gets applied to your model. And so what I want to do in this case is originally if we were to just come in here and we were to just do an interactive render of this face, it's just going to be kind of a flat face. So if I was to zoom in a little bit, you can see how this is just a white face. There's nothing really remarkable about it or anything like that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bump map to this material. And so what that's going to do is that's going to basically give this material, it's going to tell V-Ray to determine some shading things about this material. And so we're going to go in, we're going to select our material, you're going to go into your map section, and we're going to turn on bump or normal mapping. And so when we do that, nothing's changed yet because all this is is just a white um, color, basically. So there's no actual texture applied to it. So if we were to do another interactive render, things haven't really changed. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to apply a map to this material. So in this case, I'm just going to click on this little button right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a whole bunch of different things that I can apply to this texture. Well, in this case, what we want to do is we want to go up to the option for bitmap. And so in this case, this is actually going to work pretty good. This defaulted to um, some of your library stuff for V-Ray. So depending on your computer, this may look a little bit different, but right now I'm in the V-Ray for SketchUp extension materials folder. And then within the material, I've got a stone and then a maps. And what we want to look for is we want to look for a bump map material or a bump map. And so what a bump map is, is it doesn't necessarily have to be black and white, but it's basically an image that shows V-Ray where some things should be um, kind of extended out from a flat face and where other materials shouldn't be. So like if I look at this stone B bump, for example, if I go in, I click and open this, basically what this is, is this is a texture image, but it's been basically black and white mapped. So basically what this means is when we load this in V-Ray, V-Ray is going to know that the black material or the white materials are going to stick out and reflect more than the black materials. And so this is basically a map showing V-Ray what to do with the materials. And so what we're going to do is we're going to double click on that. And when we double click on that, then we can go ahead and we can go back and you're going to notice that if you look at your material preview now, you can see how basically V-Ray is simulating light bouncing off of these mortar joints even though we don't have an image applied to that. And so basically what that means is we've applied a bump map to this material. So if I was to go in now and run an interactive render, and we're going to zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that basically what V-Ray is doing is V-Ray is simulating light bumping off of this bump map. And so basically we've taken this white material and we've told V-Ray to simulate light bouncing using that bump map. That works in kind of the same way with an actual textured material. So I'm actually going to close out of these and what we're going to do is we're just going to push pull this up a little bit. And we're going to select this whole thing by triple clicking on it. And then within the asset editor, let's apply a material to that. So in this case, I'm going to apply this stone G 100 centimeter. So I'm going to add that to my scene. Then I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to click apply material to selection. And so you'll notice, since this is a V-Ray material, this actually comes preset to do bump or normal mapping. And so what that means is this already has that image pre-applied to it because it's a V-Ray material. Most, most of these materials have that pre-applied. And so let's see if we can tell the difference. On something like this, it's very slight, but you can tell the difference. So if we go in here and we do an interactive render, let's go ahead and turn our bump mapping off. And so if you look at this, when you turn your bump mapping off, basically this material is kind of flat. 
so you're not really getting any kind of light bouncing off the joints or anything like that. And uh, I'm gonna link to a video about rounding your corners off as well to make this look more realistic. We're not gonna talk about that in this video, but that's also affecting the realism here. But if I go in and I turn on the bump mapping, you'll notice that you're just getting a little bit more light reflection, specifically on this edge over here, um, based off of the amount of bump that's applied in here. And if you wanna make this, um, if you wanna make this effect more pronounced, you can adjust this slider for amount. So you can drag this up and you'll notice that your bump becomes more pronounced in here. But you do have to be a little bit careful. If you start really bumping this up, you can see how this uh, kind of overdoes everything and it doesn't look more realistic anymore. And so, but you can see how you can use this bump mapping in here to kind of simulate those rough faces. And the nice thing about bump mapping is it isn't very processor intensive, um, meaning you can apply bump mapping without this really slowing down your model. However, you're just kind of limited in the amount of actual um, geometry motion and uh, effect simulation that you can have using bump maps. And so that's where we're going to come in and we're going to talk about displacement mapping. And so I'm going to stop my interactive render and I'm going to close all this off. And now we're going to talk about our second kind of mapping, which is displacement mapping. So bump mapping basically takes this map and it simulates the light bouncing off of that without actually changing your geometry. Well, the other thing we can do is we can also apply a displacement map. And so what a displacement map is going to do, and I'm going to reverse this face. And one thing to notice about this is this works a lot better with group geometry. So in this case, I'm going to select this, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to click make group. And applying the material to group geometry works a lot better within SketchUp when you're doing displacement maps. But basically what a displacement map is going to do is it's actually going to simulate moving the actual geometry. So this simulates the light bouncing, but this will actually kind of move the vertexes or vertices of your material on here. And so as an example, let's go ahead and let's take this other white material, which is this 011 seashell, and we're going to apply that to this face. And so right now we have this seashell material and you can see how just like before, this is just basically a white material. So there's nothing really remarkable about it. Well, we're going to do the same kind of thing that we did with bump mapping, but we're going to do it with displacement. And so in order to do that, you're going to go ahead and click this drop down um, in order to get into your displacement settings. And the first thing we're going to do is enable displacement. And just like bump mapping, this didn't really affect anything because there's nothing in here telling it where and what to displace. So um, like there's no map or anything like that. So if we were to do an interactive render, you can see how this isn't really changing other than it takes a little bit longer to render. So what we want to do is we want to do the same thing as before, where we want to click on this little box right here and we want to apply one of those maps to this material. So we're just going to go into bitmap again. And in this case, what this did, which is kind of nice, is it actually took me straight to this folder. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to, I'm going to apply this stone F bump map to this material. So you can, or this stone F map to this material. And you can see when I do that, this brings this in. And now if I click back, what you're going to notice about this, especially if you look at your preview, is that this is doing something similar to what the color 10 did. So if I click on the color 10, you can see how this is basically using the light to simulate the way the material is going to look. Well, this 011 is actually moving the geometry around. And so let's go ahead and let's run a render now with this displacement map active. So if I go ahead and click on the interactive render button, the first thing you're going to notice is this is going to take a little bit longer to load. And uh, this will kind of vary depending on your computer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate down on this material to kind of show you what this is doing. So if you remember before, that other material stays completely flat. Well, in this case, what this is doing is this is actually moving the geometry within your model. So you can see how if I kind of move down to the edge right here, what this is doing is this is actually moving the vertices based on that map. So this is actually changing the geometry to kind of simulate that face. And let's try, let's go in here and let's find a different material map to apply to this. And so you can see how one thing about that is it wasn't, 
it was pronounced, but it wasn't quite as pronounced, I think, as we want it to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, click on the little folder. Let's actually apply this stone bead bump mat. That's probably a lot better example because it's a lot rougher. So if I zoom in and I look at this, you can see how this is actually basically mapping the material and it's changing the geometry in here. But when you kind of zoom out and you look at this, you can see how it's moving it a little bit too much and this has a tendency to kind of turn into a little bit of nonsense geometry. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the amount of movement that we have within this displacement map. So I'm gonna go back to my displacement section and I'm gonna bring this down to something like 0.25 in my amount. And so when I bring this down to 0.25, and then zoom in on it, you can see how this is actually moving the geometry in here to actually simulate actual roughness. And one thing you'll notice is this takes a lot longer to do. It's a lot more processor intensive, but you can definitely use that to simulate more realistic settings in here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this example out and we'll stop our interactive render and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to apply a brick material to a face and then we can kind of take a look and see what that does. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my bricks material and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll use, let's use this bricks weathered and apply that and then we'll go ahead and apply material to selection. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to double click on this geometry and group it and then apply this material to the selection so that this works properly. But you can see how right now, if I run an interactive render, this, this just has bump mapping turned on. So if I run an interactive render, this is simulating the bumps with the bump map. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna go in and instead of using the bump map, and one trick for this is you can come in here and you can copy the file location from your bump map and then go back in you can turn on displacement and turn off bump mapping you can click on this folder and you can just paste this into your file location and you can see how that's applying that map to this material so now if we back out and we reload our interactive render You can see how this is applying that displacement map to this face. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to bring our displacement amount down again. So I'm gonna bring that down to 0.25. But you can see how if you kind of zoom down or rotate down, you can see how this is giving you the actual bump geometry within your rendering. So, and then one last thing to note about this is um, there's a couple different settings in here down below that can adjust uh, basically how much geometry is being created. So in this case, your edge length defaults to four. Well, the lower the setting is in your edge length, the more memory this is gonna take up. Well, if I come in here and I change my edge length to something like 12, then what this is gonna do is this isn't gonna simulate quite as many edges in here and it's not gonna take as long to render. Um, but the trade-off there is that means that this is also not gonna be as detailed as it would have been if this was set to four. So generally speaking, you don't really need to change your subdivision all that much. So focus on your edge length if you're trying to make things work a little bit faster. But generally speaking, you're not gonna use displacement mapping a whole lot unless you're trying to really show some detail within your rendering. So um, because it slows everything down so much, this just takes a lot longer in order to calculate all of this geometry and the vertices moving around. Um, this will just take a lot longer to actually render. So you're not actually gonna use the displacement mapping all that much unless you're creating a really detailed rendering where you're getting in close kind of like this. So, and then you still need to play around with your settings, like your amount and that kind of thing to get the actual look that you're going for. 
So that's kind of a quick overview of the difference between bump mapping and displacement mapping. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this tutorial? Was it helpful to you? Was there something I left out? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.